everybody. I'm Gopinath Jairaj, Chief Information Officer at Tata Motors. Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, we will be talking today about uh, digital transformation in the automotive industry, specifically in the context of Tata Motors. And digital transformation is a very large uh, topic, so we will be, I will be taking a technology implementation perspective uh, as we speak about this uh, particular topic. So to start off with, uh, we will just I'll try and touch upon some key facts around Tata Motors in the context of the automotive industry. Uh, we've been around for a long time. So we've been established, we established at, in 1945 in the same business of mobility, but we had started out with locomotives. And of course, now we are India's largest commercial vehicle manufacturer and also one of the top three OEMs as far as the cars and passenger cars and SUVs are concerned. We haul about 50% of all of India's cargo and uh, we put out 7 lakh vehicles a year in, onto our roads. I think our fleet size is close to about 10 million vehicles which are running on the roads today. So you could potentially say that nearly half of India's passenger and cargo are running on our wheels. It's a pretty big responsibility on our shoulders as well as a pretty big uh, task that we have on our hand. And in the context of this particular topic and uh, in the context of this environment, uh, we'll talk a bit about how IT and digital plays a role and how things are changing as we experience this transformation in the industry. Moving forward, if you want to support a large organization like this, like Tata Motors, with the size of uh, the business that we have and the size of the customers that we have, that we serve, we have core systems that have been set up to support this. The core systems that have been set up have been done in over a history of almost 50 years. You know, we've been building, delivering IT systems for the last 50 years for our organization. And these are essentially the core systems that are being used to deliver all the different aspects of manufacturing, delivering, uh, selling and servicing our product in the hands of our customer. And all these uh, systems are essentially worth supporting and are continuing to support more than a lakh and a half of users uh, last couple of decades. The core systems that are set up uh, which are supporting our core business are essentially used to deliver these products into the hands of our customers and are used to be uh, are used to extend the ecosystem that they, our customers are uh, operating our products in and used to service these particular uh, these products as we are looking at these enterprise systems that are supporting our customers these are, these, these uh, enterprise systems not just to uh, run our business but also to enable our customers use our product so moving forward uh, as you can see into the core uh, enterprise landscape that we have the, these are, this is what a typical organization that is the, of our size would be able to, would be having in their uh, ecosystem. The enterprise systems, which are also called the systems of record, records the core uh, transactions of uh, the, uh, the core processes that we have. And these core transactions generate data, which are then used to further refine and optimize these processes. Now in this environment of enterprise systems and a customer base, which is such a large customer base, which is such a variety of products, we are now experiencing the advent or the, the disruption that has come in with digital. This disruption of uh, digital, you might have heard of this uh, abbreviation called SMAC. So that's a abbreviation or a condensation of four key elements, social, mobile, analytics and cloud. So these are technology components that have come in in the context of IT and disturbed the, uh, disrupted the entire uh, ecosystem that we are working in or the technology ecosystem that we are working in. In the same context, we have another acronym which is also very commonly used in our industry, in the automotive industry called ACES. So ACES stands for Autonomous, Connected, Electric and Shared. So these are manifestations of the uh, digital disruptions in the context of automotive. So autonomous vehicles, connected vehicles, electric vehicles and shared mobility are very, very deep trends in the market or in the industry which are driving the behavior and the usage of these products. We all know that the digital giants like Google, Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, all these have basically defined the decade, the last decade that we've been working or we've been existing in. And the, this definition which has happened is because of the changes that they've made in the processes and the technology that they leveraged to deliver experiences to the customer. Now taking that context and looking at that impact on the vehicle, if you look at it, the vehicle itself has become connected. The vehicle has become a key participant in the digital ecosystem. It's almost become a computer or a mobile phone on wheels. And this really changes the way the vehicle or the product is used. Also, every process that we have uh, today of using a, a vehicle or using a product has undergone a change, has been reimagined. Uber is a great example. Reimagine the way we would get from point A to point B. Reimagine the way we are able to use uh, a product. And these things, this type of a thinking can be applied across the board, across the entire, uh, all the different aspects of running an enterprise like ours. 
Now the key difference is that the digital giants that are there out there who have been leveraging these technologies to deliver experiences to our customers pretty much started with a clean slate in the sense that these were businesses that started out with something that uh, with, from scratch and hence had a chance to create an entirely new set of processes and engagement. The question or the challenge that we have for a company like Tata Motors or for a large enterprise is how do we look, we don't have a clean slate, we obviously have a very large ecosystem that we have to support. How do we able to take digital into our ecosystem and convert this as an advantage rather than an impediment? And that's the key challenge that we are looking at. How do we bring in the aspects of personalization, digital disruption without business disruption? So just to take a view of that, what does this mean in the context of our company and our, our industry? So when you look at it from a, in the Tata Motors in the digital era the, and the pre-digital era, the digital era, the differences are that we used to be focusing our systems and processes to manufacture a product or execute a process. So we build a car, we build a truck, so we use it, we use our systems to manufacture that uh, particular uh, vehicle or we use or we set up a process and drive it so that it's able to service the product in the field. While this is the way we used to operate or we have been operating and we continue to operate, today the outcomes that we're looking for from our systems are not just about manufacturing a product or executing a process, it's about also enabling a customer experience and enabling an experience which is positive, which is delightful and also achieving a business outcome for our customer and a business outcome for, our, for the industry itself. These are things that are defined which are an outcome of blending systems, processes and experiences together to come back with this kind of a outcome which we are looking for in the digital era. So this kind of an outcome that we are trying to drive at, how do we get that and how do we do this in the context of our systems itself. So we take a quick look at, and I said that we are going to talk about a technology implementation perspective. If we take a quick look at how we have been implementing systems all these days and years, the implementation of impl enterprise systems typically have had an established process and an established infrastructure and a core set of processes to support the business. They typically are inside out. So we had this process called requirements gathering. They were supported by vendor applications that are come from vendor systems. These applications typically had embedded business logic. They had interfaces and finally were delivered in applications hosted in data centers, right? And this is extremely crucial for running a large business and, and it's extremely crucial part or the backbone of the IT systems as they stand. While we had this particular process, the digital way of thinking is, up, is in contrast to that, right? So the typically the core that we have from a digital way of thinking is an outside in view. So we are looking at uh, a digital or a design thinking process, which is more about outside in, uh, looking at leveraging open systems and open, open source applications, to orchestrate these components together and pull them together in forms of APIs, create microservices and deliver them on platforms. And typically these are delivered on the cloud. So we're really looking at two parallel methods of process and systems to deliver this kind of an experienced kind of a digital outcome to our customers. The core challenge as well as the core opportunity for us in a large enterprise is it's not about the or, it's not enterprise or digital, it's about the and and how do we find a way to combine these two in, a, in the right balance, finding the right balance to you know, and deliver the experience and the outcome to our end customers. Just for a second, is it how do we actually achieve this on the ground? How do you, what kind of an approach or a thought process do we bring to our applications, to our processes? How do we bring our thought process to a product, so uh, to an IT product that can encompass this kind of a outcome that we are looking for? If you could see, see the slide or the picture that is up there, we are really looking at nesting this into in such a way that our core systems are sitting at the center of, of, our, of our experience or center of the, of the uh, delivery that we want to do. The core systems typically housed in a data center with data, business logic and interfaces. And these are surrounded by the other digital components like the APIs, and microservices orchestrated together to form coherent platforms and these platforms delivered on a digital uh, in a digital method or the cloud really creates a distributed ecosystem so getting the data flow uh, retaining the process integrity and integrating all of these models and processes new models and processes in a judicious combination of cloud and, da and, and, and data center or cloud and core really results in this kind of a outcome we call this approach an evolutionary architectural approach the idea is that we don't just switch on and off one way of doing things. We gradually evolve the systems, we evolve our processes and we evolve along with the business and keep changing as the business models change. And this whole process is what we call as evolutionary architectural approach. So looking at this, we take this approach and basically focus on how we are able to deliver an outcome to our customers. 
The customers themselves are again interacting with our extended ecosystem. We have our dealers, we have our distributors, we have our retailers. And all of these distributed uh, you know, extended ecosystem are also supported by our uh, digital applications or digital products. So the key component here is the core systems at the center. The edge systems are what we call a system of interaction, which are used by our customers at the edge of our uh, computing landscape. And the bridge component that connects these two digital platforms that we have created. So we have been focusing on creating coherent digital platforms specific to a domain, which connects the core enterprise systems of record to the systems of interaction that the application users can use and experience. This co connecting uh, component put together creates an entire ecosystem or a digital ecosystem. This enables our internal customers, our, our, our employees, our external customers, the people who buy or the, or, the, or the individuals who buy our product, the extended ecosystem that is distributors, dealers, as well as the entire ecosystem of our customers when they use our product. So this includes fuel pumps, this includes toll knockers, it includes charging stations, and a whole host of other uh, services that we are you know, enabling for our customers to be connected into one extended whole, which is creating a mobility universe for our uh, customer ecosystem. This entire e uh, ecosystem that we are enabling for our customers is encompassed in what we are calling as an evolutionary uh, platform approach. Now using this, what are we actually looking at from a customer perspective? So we'll take a quick look at some of the industry defining products that we've been delivering over this uh, over the last few years using our platforms.